Hey, what's going on? Here's part two. I do really quickly want to mention, don't hesitate to comment below, or if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Now, let's check out the loose tube armored fiber optic cable. Now, this is your outdoor armored fiber optic cable. And the jacket is made out of a PE construction, and the lifetime expectancy of this type of construction is around 30 years. Now, as you can tell, it's not a very flexible cable at all. It's a, um, yeah. So definitely, you're going to need probably a pretty large bend radius for this type of cable. I do also want to mention that just because it's armored fiber doesn't mean that it's only going outdoors. In part three, we're going to check out a interlocking indoor fiber optic cable. In the meantime, let's crack this cable open. So underneath our PE rated jacket, you have a corrugated steel armor. Now this is going to give you additional protection in direct burial applications, not only from maybe something hitting it, but one of the common problems with fiber is rodents chewing at the cable. So this will also help prevent that, giving you a problem down the road. Now let's take a look at what's underneath this armor. As we start getting underneath the armor, we got a pull string here, and we start getting a close look at the water blocking tape. Let's keep at it. So we got our rip cord. Let's get that tape out of the way. And we got our binding, got our binding yarn here. Go ahead and get that out of the way. It helps to keep the fibers nice and tight, close to the central strength member. Now this is a loose tube outdoor direct burial armored fiber optic cable. Now you'll notice that there's two tubes and there's other black tubes involved here. Now this is a 24 strand fiber. The tubes, you'll have up to 12 strands of fiber per tube. This construction is by Corning. It's a loose tube cable, but the construction design is actually an Altos construction. And it's a, pretty much to make it easier on them, they have one type of cable construction, and if you need more strands, let's say you need a 36 strand, they'll fill up another one of these buffer tubes with 12 strands and they'll also add another color to it. If you need a 48, they'll fill another buffer tube, add another color to it. It's a little easier on the manufacturing process. Now if I remember correctly, this cable construction can go up to 72 strands. So you have 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72. So you only have a certain amount of buffer tubes here. Now the Altos direct burial construction cable can go, I believe, up to 288 strands. So there is a larger type of cable, diameter-wise, with more tubes in it. Now let's go ahead and get rid of these tubes. As you can tell, we don't need them. We'll separate the tubes we do need from the central strength member. Ah, we also got a water swellable tape right there. We'll get rid of that. The central strength member is very strong, so we're going to use a pair of cutting pliers to get that out of the way. Now, there are different cable constructions, but when you see loose tube fiber, there's going to be two popular types. There's a loose tube and there's a tight buffered. In part three, the interlocking indoor armored fiber is a tight buffered construction. Check that out. You'll start getting a feel for the difference. But we also do have a video on our YouTube channel uh, talking about the difference between loose tube and tight buffered. You might want to check that out. Once again, you have your 250 UM strands. 
Now if you're going to terminate this fiber, one of the things that gets missed often is the need for a loose tube fan out kit. Loose tube fan out kits go over, it's basically the 900 size tube that will go over this strand to build it up in order for the connectors to properly terminate on this type of cable. So there it is, loose tube fiber optic cable, basically a tube with loose fibers inside of it. Now this is an outdoor rated cable. Actually in part one, that wasn't only an outdoor cable, but that was actually an indoor-outdoor rated cable. Indoor-outdoor rated cables, even though they're more common for tight buffered type of construction, the loose tube is still popular, but not as popular. Reason being is the fan out kits do create more labor and it also does add cost to your installation. Another thing I do want to point out is loose tube. Why is loose tube more common in outdoor applications? From what I've heard from my contractor customers is in outdoor applications, the temperature will change a lot more, of course, than indoor climates. And the outdoor weather can actually cause the cable to expand and contract. So with the two, with the fiber being loose in there, you won't have, a, it won't give your, the, the temperature changes won't give your fibers a hard time compared to tight buffered applications. So some guys in high, uh, out here in Southern California, the big large warehouses, they get pretty hot in the summertime. And for fiber being ran in that application, I do have some guys where they want a loose tube indoor outdoor rated fiber just to avoid that problem. Not very common, but you might bump into that. At the end of this video, go ahead and check out the annotations, taking a part one if you want to check that out again, or part three, part four, and part five. Thanks.